Hi there, and welcome to this A-level sociology topic video on the question of whether sociology is a science. Some students are scared of this question, either because one of the reasons they chose sociology was because they wanted to get away from science, or because it seems a rather philosophical question, and some resources overcomplicate it a bit. So let's break this down into a few clear chunks. First, we can't determine whether sociology is a science or not without knowing what a science is. Not everyone agrees about what constitutes a science, but here are some thoughts. It's an organised, systematic and cumulative pursuit of knowledge, in which hypotheses are rigorously tested. It is often suggested that scientists seek proof that their research is based on empiricism, gaining knowledge through observing it and experiencing it themselves, rather than just through theorising. As such, science is said to be objective and neutral. Scientists talk about the scientific method, which goes something like this pose a question, conduct some background research, and then create a hypothesis, test that hypothesis with experiments, analyse the data and reach a conclusion. Um, these conclusions are then, and results are peer-reviewed, and then published. So that's stage one, what is science? Now we need to consider whether sociology is like this. It is positivist sociologists who argue that it is, or that it should be. They say that it is possible to establish objective social facts by using scientific research methods, the thorough collection of empirical evidence. They argue that good sociology does follow this scientific method that we've just outlined. They identify a social problem or question, they formulate a, formulate a hypothesis and that's based on research. While they rarely if ever use laboratory experiments, they do prefer what they consider to be reliable methods that produce quantitative data which they can analyse and that allow them to reach conclusions, and those conclusions are peer-reviewed and, and published in academic journals. So sociologists like Comte and Durkheim were of this view. Durkheim's famous study on suicide was, in part at least, designed to establish that sociology was indeed a science and one that could explain all human behaviour. He approached the topic like a natural scientist, testing his hypothesis that suicide rates were link linked to levels of social control or social cohesion, against a number of variables such as religious belief. Durkheim did reach conclusions supporting his hypothesis and published them in a very influential essay. However, his methods have been extensively criticised. Um, even uh, positivists, so the positivists have criticised Durkheim's study. They've asked about how you can really operationalise concepts like social cohesion and social control. That means how can you measure them if you get to produce quantitative data, you have to somehow measure these things, um, and also questions about the reliability of his suicide statistics. Um, this raises the suggestion that perhaps sociology should be a science, but rarely is. Karl Popper thought that positivist sociology generally failed to be scientific. That is Karl Popper, by the way, not Prince Philip. Um, Popper argues that scientific reasoning is deductive, whereas sociologists tend to use inductive reasoning. That is, Popper says that scientists engage in falsification. They try to prove that their hypothesis is false, and if they cannot, then it's the best hypothesis we have, until future research. Inductive reasoning is trying to find evidence to prove that hypothesis is true, and he argues that this is what sociologists tend to do. He uses the analogy of the black swan. If you had a hypothesis that all swans were white, using inductive reasoning you would find lots of evidence to prove your hypothesis true. Every white swan that you see. But if you find one black swan, you've proved it false. Popper argues that some sociological concepts cannot be falsified and therefore are not scientific concepts. He particularly criticises Marxism for this. How could we falsify a concept like false class consciousness. If you imagine a, an interview, do you think you're being exploited by the bourgeoisie? No. Ah, that's because of false class consciousness. No, it's not. Well, you would say that because of false class consciousness, etc. Okay, so moving on to the interpretivists then. Social action theorists tend to have a completely different view of what sociology should be like compared with positivists. They're not seeking out universal laws or indeed establishing social facts. They are interested in what people think and how they feel. And they note that people are not like chemicals. They have agency. If you put potassium in water, a scientist can accurately predict how it will react. But if you choose to label 
a school pupil as a high achiever, we can observe how some children react in a particular situation. We can't generalise or predict. The interesting thing to study then is how people interpret situations and what they think and feel. This is micro sociology as opposed to macro action as opposed to structure. They also argue that sociology cannot establish social facts because concepts and institution, institutions are in fact socially constructed. We mentioned um, Durkheim's famous study on suicide earlier. Interpretivist criticisms of Durkheim question whether you can really quantify suicide because it is a social construction rather than a social fact. The statistics that you can use are the product of coroner's reports and each incident is individual. Each means something different to the people who were involved. A lot of textbooks now bring realism into this essay too. Now this isn't the same as the realism you've learnt um, in, about, in relation to crime and deviance, so don't try and make that link. That link isn't there. This is another, well perhaps it is a science point. It comes from Andrew Sayer, and it's the idea that there are different types of science, ones that are closed and ones that are open. Something like chemistry is a closed science. It's possible to test how one thing reacts to another by controlling the other variables. But meteorology is also a science, and as weather forecasters are always telling us, we can't make certain predictions about what will happen. We can model likely developments, but sometimes it snows when nobody was expecting it, or everyone's expecting rain, and it's fine all day. Because there are so many variables at work, meteorologists are not able to control them. The same is true with social science. Because we can't establish precise laws and predictions that will always be the case does not mean that we can't carry out valuable research, establish trends and correlations, and nor does it stop social science from being science. Oh, and just to really confuse us, there's the question of whether science is a science, or at least whether science really meets the criteria we set for it earlier in the essay. Thomas Kuhn points out that science is not really entirely objective. It works within what he calls paradigms. There are a set of assumptions about the world and science, and mainstream science operates within those assumptions, within that paradigm. Science that challenges that is not welcomed, like Popper might suggest that it would be as a form of falsification, but instead it is sidelined and assumed to be wrong. If such radical science can eventually break through into the mainstream, then there is a paradigm shift. So, for example, establishing that the Earth goes around the Sun rather than the other way around. In this way, Kuhn suggests that sociology is a young science that is yet to find a unifying paradigm. If all sociology was functionalist, for example, it would then behave like a science with the other perspectives rejected until there was a future paradigm shift. Others point out that science is funded and who funds the research might impact their conclusions, which challenges the idea that science is always neutral and objective. So, for example, research funded by oil companies has tended to be less sure of man-made global warming than all of the other research on that subject. Postmodernists go further and criticise the very concept of science. Science is the ultimate meta-narrative, just a big story that seeks to explain everything. Um, Ultimately, it's just that, a story, according to postmodernists. Other ideas and belief systems are available, and people can pick and mix those that work for them. This can provide you with something in the way of a conclusion, although you should also look to directly answer the question, whatever precise question you've been asked. And you might also want to challenge the postmodern view, rather than give them the last word. I'm not sure I'd want to go to a postmodern doctor if I was feeling unwell. Just a quick look at some of the sort of questions you could be asked on this question. Um, on this subject, um, evaluate the view that sociology is a science, might just get that as a straightforward essay, could come up as a 10 marker, or something like outline and explain two criticisms of the view that sociology is a science, um, or two ways in which it might be. Um, and then there are related topics such as evaluate the view that sociology cannot be value free, or questions about objectivity and subjectivity, where a lot of this same content could be used. I hope that's been useful. Keep a lookout for more revision videos and resources from Tutor to You. And best of luck with your exams. Thanks for thanks for listening.